Hi there, welcome back to the channel and welcome to an unexpected addition to the uh, restoration series of the Sony CRF 320. This is to prove that I'm incredibly stubborn, sometimes stupidly so, but I'm really pleased that this time I stuck with it. This radio, I could not let it go. I had to sort out the antenna issue and the result of that is it now has a fully restored or rebuilt pop-up antenna, just like the original ones. And I didn't buy an original antenna. Those things are incredibly expensive, about 200 bucks each, sometimes with a bend on it and everything else. But I decided to rebuild one and I've got the 3D printer and I figured how tough could it be? I managed to find um, replacement antennas for the Texan S2000, which is a copy of the Grundig Satellite 750 Pro. Those things are great. I've got one of those, so I was able to remove um, my antenna from my 750, put it on there, try it out, and it works. It really works. So I'm going to show you in this video just how I did that. It takes quite a lot of 3D printing. I'm, I'm going to make all those files available at the end if you want to do it yourself. So if this sort of thing, if watching someone be really stubborn is something you like to watch, stick around and enjoy my folly. I started from the most obvious. The uh, bracket over here, that's the base for the antenna, had been removed. The only thing that was there were the two screws. I think somebody removed this antenna and actually sold it. Judging from the prices they're achieving on uh, eBay, I can't say that I'm surprised. So I had to redo that and I took the one from the other side out, measured it all out and did a 3D model on Fusion 360. With a bit of magic and luck from 3D printer, here's the result. I've even found a washer that fits perfectly in there, just like we have on the other side. So this part is done. I then had to solve the issue of the different shaped end cap or top cap. And I got a friend who's been fortunate enough to get one of these radios in immaculate condition. I got him to photograph the cap for me with measurements so that I could reproduce them. Now, obviously, the best way to do this would be to re reproduce these on a lathe out of aluminium or steel. I don't have a lathe, but I do have a 3D printer, and I'm sure I can get this right. So the results were mixed. Tried the first one, got it all messed up. The holes were too small. Second one, the hole was too big. Third one, made a mistake. The hole was even bigger, and so on and so forth, until finally, I now have what I believe to be a perfect reproduction of that end cap and I haven't actually tried to fit this yet but the idea you can actually make a thread but the idea was to get this to fit fairly snugly into the thread so you screw it on it'll cut its own thread it's slipping but I can do it this is now exactly the same shape as the original cap. Now obviously I'm going to have to do something about the color and I've got a solution for that. I've got some uh, primer and I've got some chrome spray so we'll see how that comes out. This uh, push latch is the heart of the system. It is a very simple push latch system that you use to lock um, closet doors. So you will fit this inside the closet this washer gets screwed onto the door and it will clamp like that and you push it in, it closes the door, you push it out and it gives you the ability to open your door. Now, this uh, comes in many, many shapes and sizes. This is the only one I could find. It's the only one in Madeira. But it seems to do a pretty good job and it's also fairly small length. It's not that big. I didn't want it too big because I don't have much space inside the radio. If I could have got it smaller, I would have chosen it, but this is the smallest I could find. And I bought a few of these and I then have to adapt these to fit in the radio. But first of all, I had to find a way of adapting this top section to clamp onto the end of the antenna. And that is where this thing comes in. 3D printed as well. And I'll show you what this does. So. This part here fits into the antenna like that. It's pretty tight. Nevertheless, doesn't matter because you've got this thing screwed in at the bottom where you put in this washer at the bottom like that. 
But before putting the washer in, I decided to put in a tag to solder the antenna connection to because I did not want to do it at the top. The top will be uh, flapping around a bit. So the way I've designed it is this goes in first like that, through that little hole on the side. The washer then goes in here. And then of course this connects to the antenna. Push it in. And I found a perfect little screw for that. Flathead. So it disappears completely when you screw it in here. So the antenna is now perfectly connected to there. And we've got our solder tag on here, which is obviously making connection to the antenna itself. Now this then connects on here. At the moment, what it's doing is it's actually magnetically connected because there is the magnet in there. That certainly works. If you pull it hard enough, it will come off. So I've got a feeling I'm going to have to use a bit of glue when I finally have it ready to be fitted in place. And of course, the knob here is drying at the moment. I've painted it. You'll see what it looks like. It's coming out very, very well. But I think I've got the antenna idea sorted out. Now I've got to find a way of connecting this to the side of the radio. Now the problem is that it is different depending on which side you're talking about. The one on the left, looking from the back, has got more space. The one on the right's got very little space. So I'm going to have to figure out how to fit this. I might have to adapt that a little bit. This one's for the left. We'll see how we get on. I figured out the left-hand uh, connector or adapter, and this is what I've come up with. I cut these edges. Remember this thing had these round edges on here. That was cut down. This side was cut slightly more than that one. Didn't need to be, but this was cut down and it's down to about 16 millimeters width. And then I had to build a little adapter. It's this little shelf here. And this shelf is going to rest on the bottom there. And this then rests on it and it shifts it away from the wall here because Otherwise, the antenna would be angled and I wanted it straight. OK, so this now fits nicely, but I had to do it like this because I needed to try and find a way of connecting this to the edge. And I found a very convenient hole on here, that one there. And I decided to use the same hole so I wouldn't need to drill anything. And that's what this hole here is for. So when I put this in, it goes through the top. It fits nice and flush. There's actually a little, little uh, inlet here to take into account the screw over here. And then this screw just comes in from the side. And I've got myself very good support. This now works perfectly. And this is really unobtrusive. It sort of fades away in there. You can hardly see it, but it's doing the job. And now if I push that down, Clicks in, clicks out, clicks in, clicks out. There we go. So that's done. And on the side here, we've just got one more screw, which is exactly the same type as the other screws. So it looks like nothing has been changed. This uh, adapter was basically trial and error. I um, did the width and the height, and then I had to figure out exactly what height the shelf had to have. And that's got to do with um, how far out of the top I wanted to to reach. And then, of course, this little inlet over here has to do with the screw that's on the bottom um, synthesizer unit. So I had to just make a shelf in there. This is all DIY, very much adapted to the situation. Not something that you can standardize, but it's working great. I made another change when I was uh, fitting this to the top, and that is to redesign this bracket or this pass through here. And a couple of things uh, needed to be done. One of them was that the hole in the center was too wide. It was made for the old antennas. Remember, I had uh, reproduced this exactly the same as the original. So these holes here were exactly the same as the original. This pass through here was exactly the same as the original. And I actually made one and that won't go to waste because that's going to go back with the radio in case uh, by some miracle he finds the original antennas but it allowed the antenna in here to flap around a bit. 
and that made it difficult to actually slide nicely into the hole and latch. Also, I wanted the bottom to be supported. So I built this one here and as you can see, it actually comes right through and there's that little lip down there which holds this antenna perfectly in place. It's still not tight. You shouldn't make it tight, but it holds it in place. And you can see that here. This diameter is smaller. It's just one millimeter more than the diameter of the antenna. And then we've got this that extends down and holds the antenna snugly when you're sliding it through. Everything else is the same. So this is what I'm going to be using and I'll be doing another one for the other side as well. And now what we have is an antenna that can go all the way down and it doesn't actually, it's not even stuck at the bottom. It's holding quite well. I'm not sure if that's going to be good enough, but it goes all the way down and it doesn't wobble, but it also doesn't catch, which is just perfect. But of course we need one more thing, don't we? We need the cap. And I've got a cap. Here's the cap. This was also 3D printed and then sprayed with metallic spray. You know what? This thing actually looks pretty good. I've been putting it in and out a few times, so it's actually sort of created its own thread. Look at that. And if I push it down, it clicks, push it down, it pops up. And it's about the same diameter there, so it sort of fits into that hole beautifully. And I think we've got our antenna fixed. I'm going to put the, uh, the side panel on so we see what this thing looks like completed. And this is what it looks like. Ha! Admittedly, the one on the left there is a bit of a cheat because that's not the original antenna. All I did is I made a little cap for it. I'm still waiting for the, um, the replacement antennas, but when I do, I will make the necessary adaptations to make it exactly like this one. And this is how this one works. Perfect. I like it. I really do. I really like it. And now for real, this is where I'm going to leave you for now. Probably on this project, everything is working beautifully. I've got the antennas replaced. That one will be done exactly like that one with a slight modification on the, on the um, adaptation at the bottom. I've now got uh, a whole lot of 3D prints. This is ridiculous. I've done so many of these models, 3D models on Fusion 360. It's, it's starting to look more like a Fusion 360 project. Here we have the small gear, remember, for the, um, for the AM and or for the medium wave, long wave and FM tuning. Here's the big gear that goes into the short wave tuning. Both of these, this one and that one, are on the PCBWay website share section. So if you want to print them out, go right ahead. You do so at your own risk. Check things properly, okay? I built the antenna connector to the uh, to that latch switch that I found. Again, this could uh, vary depending on which sort of latch switch you get. I built the pass-through at the top, which is exact replica of the one they've got. So if you do have an original uh, antenna, this will work on that one. But then I designed this one for my specific needs and um, that's working very, very well. So now this radio is done and I'm going to try it out for some time. I've been playing with this for the whole week or actually more than that since I sorted that problem out and it has behaved beautifully. No problems at all. I'll need to put the back on. I'm waiting for the uh, the other antennas or the actual antennas that I ordered for this to arrive because this one's using mine at the moment but it's exactly the same. So as soon as that's finished I'll close everything up and that's it. Done. Done. I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh, by the way, I'm going to make all the um, 3D models available, the Fusion 360 and the STL files for uh, printing. 
I'll be putting them into a sort of a bundle. If you want them, just email me and I will um, send them to you. I will not be able to make modifications specific to your case. It's as they come, right? What you see is what you get. If you want to change stuff, that's up to you. Have fun. All right. Once again, thanks for watching and uh, thanks for sticking around while I play with these little really crazy things like trying to reproduce a pop-up antenna. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> you can probably hear that. I'm so chuffed. But anyway, that's it for now and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. Links on the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.